Y'all see, I wore my best shit tonight. Thank you very much. You got to know how to coordinate. I'm coordinating. You got to coordinate. Look at that. Blue, blue, yellow, yellow, yellow. Hi, I'm Big Sis. Welcome to Real Black. We're here at the Helium Comedy Club with John Witherspoon. Welcome to the show. Thank you. We know you best on shows like the Wayans Brothers, Wayans Brothers. and Boomerang. Boomerang. Movie. Friday. And Friday, the Boondocks. Boondocks. But what's the real John Witherspoon like? What am, what am I like? Yes. I, I like to be at home and count my money. <laughs> After, I all that, all, that. after all those uh, movies you mentioned, mm -hmm. I like to just stay home and count my paper. I collect cards and I like to be around my kids. I have a young family and a beautiful wife. I'd rather be home and uh, riding along the Pacific Coast Highway in one of my old cars with the top down, pocket full of money. But I got to work. Well, we enjoy your work very Thank much. Thank you. Recently, we had Paul Mooney on the show and he talked about working with Richard Pryor. Mm -hmm. You worked on his classic TV series. Uh, Arthur Williams, Chicago Sun Herald. You've just okayed a $250 million increase in our space program. What was that like? It was, it was, it was a lot of chaos. <laughs> Richard was out of control in a way. He was a talented man, but he uh, screwed up his career on television because he couldn't conform to just not cursing every second. Uh, and. Uh, you know, I curse a lot myself, but I'm not on TV. When I'm on TV, I cut it down. But Richard was high, and he had fun. I used to be his opening act at, at, the, at the comedy store. I used to go out there and do 45 minutes, and Richard would do an hour and a half. And uh, we had some of the greatest people come to watch his show. That's why I love it, because the audience was not all black, not all white. It was just mixed and old holes. We hadn't, hadn't been out the house in 20 years to come see Richard. That's why I used to like, he bring everybody out. Mm -hmm. And that's what you got to do if you want to get the masses. It's called COD, crossover dollars. COD, <laughs> crossover dollars. That's okay. what I'm out for, COD. When do you feel as though you had your first real break? Well, I used to do a lot of work, but I got my first break, I think, when um, Sean Waynes told me at the, the uh, Laugh Factory that he wanted me to be a father, his father in a, in a TV show. <laughs> Hey, big fella. Look like you've got a good appetite. <laughs> you the owner? Me and the three banks I owe money to. <laughs> Back to your appetite. Can I interest you in a double cheeseburger? You know, you get money every week. I used to make, I used to make a lot of money by making, you know, do a movie here and make a movie there, and you know, but you don't get a weekly salary, and it's damn good. See, success to me is not doing a great play and people stand up and applaud you. Bravo, bravo, See, that's not success for me. When I walk into the Bank of America and they stand up and say, bravo, bravo, <laughs> that's when I'm, so my success is different than other people. So when I start getting a weekly check, that's when I was, to me, I was successful. Okay. Bravo, <laughs> excuse me, I was <laughs> In addition to your Showtime <laughs> comedy special, mm -hmm. you also co-starred in an independent film called After Sex. Yeah, what happened to that thing? I've never seen it. It's in, the, it's in stores right now. People Is it are really? Lying. I gotta yeah. go see that. Boy, <laughs> my people would laugh at that boy. It was, I had an old white woman, and uh, we were uh, swingers. If you had a chance to go back in time and change things, you know, like you and I being together, would you? Would I change anything if I could go back in time? Yeah. No. God, no. So, um, which do you prefer, doing a series like The Boondocks, or do you want to do um, independent films? Where, where are you going to go now with your career? But I like The Boondocks, but they don't pay enough money. Okay. It's rewarding because everybody loves you. Everyone loves The Boondocks. My kids, I have a 19-year-old son in college. All of his kids love The Boondocks. But they don't pay, you know, because when I say, when I go to Bank of America, bravo! When I go to Bank of America with The Boondocks money, Nobody, no one, they're at their desk, they don't look back, they don't look and see, say, Mr. Winston, how you doing? Yeah, how you doing? So, so I, I like movies that pay a lot of money, but lately, black people and their movies, uh, they have small budgets. Mm -hmm. You know, I cannot go back and do 
a movie where I'm getting scale again. And that's what they offer me, scale. I said, I can't do it. I love you guys. I hope you're successful. But I'm not going to mess up my career because you're going to do a movie for scale for $300,000. Right. That's your whole budget. And you're going to pay me 500 a day mm -hmm. and tie me up. And I can go on the road and make the money I usually make. So I feel sorry for them, but they need to get some more people. Right. Uh, I can't do it. Well, you've helped a lot of people get off the ground like Robert Towns and... Oh, I've, like I've done my duty in this show business. See, when I did Friday, the first Friday, I made the scale. The movie cost $2 million, though. And we didn't get paid for scale. And the movie it grossed $45 million. And I, they, no one sent me another check. So, you got to get your contract up front. And when you get a movie for $300,000, I'm not going to make any money. If they make, if they make $40 million, they're not going to send me a check. This is good advice for young and upcoming oh, yeah. actors trying to get into the business to know this information. Well, if they can do a movie, if they, if you just upcoming, get the movie, do it. I took all the little movie, Robert Townsend movie. I don't even think I think he owe me some money now. <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> Robert, pay my money, man. You owe me some money. Send me some money with your tired ass. Well. On to other subjects like politics, I'm sure you have some opinions. What do you think about this up and coming election with um, oh, the, Barack Obama with, and yes. Hillary? Hillary and oh, Barack. She's too uh, big, bro. Can I curse? <laughs> I don't know. Y'all bleep this fat bitch. Brought <laughs> <laughs> me to whoop her ass. <laughs> Talking all that shit. Whoop that bitch ass. Lying ass. I was in Bosnia. <laughs> Shooting at me. Oh, I ducked and I made it because I want to help the people in Bosnia. And they said she was sucking on ice cream cone when they found the film and showed her ass. She's like, but it's Hollywood, it's politics. Mm. You know, it's politics. He's trying to be a gentleman, which is good, gonna be good for him because she ain't gonna win anyway. She, we're gonna have a black president. All this stuff they're talking about now don't mean nothing, but he's gonna be the next, he's gonna be a black president. Whether he should carry a gun, because if somebody shoot at the president, he'd be shooting back. If I was the president, I carried me two guns. I had me a two, two, two like that, and I learned how to flip them. Pop, 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 so you can shoot this way and that way. <laughs> okay. You have mm -hmm. um, other things going on that you'd like to tell us about? Yes. Uh, you college kids, buy some of those t-shirts I have. Don't nobody go in the bathroom for 35, 45 minutes. I have a web page. Bang, bang. Bangbang.com. Four bangs. Remember, four, three bangs is a porno site. Four bangs. Get some of those t shirts. I have greeting cards. Send some to your mama and your grandmama. I'm going to buy I'll, some of those cards. You, please buy some. <laughs> and I have a rap CD coming out. Can I hold your yeah, hand? Yeah, you can hold my hand anytime. <laughs> I have a rap CD coming out. Now, listen to me. It's going to be out probably about uh, uh, probably around uh, August 2008. Yeah, uh, I'm rapping. Can we have a sample? Well, I, I, well, you know, it's, don't nobody go in the bathroom. <laughs> Please don't go in the bathroom. Don't nobody go in the bathroom for the next 35, 45 minutes. And it's called 63 cents. 63 cents. Remember that. <laughs> any final thoughts, any last words, any words of wisdom that you would like to share with us? First of all, the kids. Young people, you got it. You got to seek your dream. Whatever you think you want, go do it. Because you don't. If you get there and you don't like it, you can always. You're young. You can try something new. But don't give up. Don't give up. I didn't give up. Well, I had no choice. I was broke. I was coming up. So I got the hell out of Detroit. If you don't like the city you're in, and a girl chasing you down, talking about getting married, leave that night about two in the morning. Get up and go. And just caught right up back about two years later said baby I had to leave had some stuff I had to take care of but do not get tied up with some woman you know all she wants you was because she need a meal ticket and, and women don't get tied up with some man because all you want is a pretty girl if you got something to do get your ass up and go do it and do not give up that's the thing you don't give up because you know it's a dream I mean I, I live my dream but you, my dream became much more than I thought it was going to be I didn't mean to make it this big, but you know, but I accept it. And when I go to the Bank of America, I get a standing ovation. <laughs> Bravo, Mr. Witherspoon is here. Well, thank you very much, John. Oh, thank you.